Greetings, students. I am going to take your exams for you. I already have taken all of your quizzes for you. Uh, just to go through and look and see what are some of the common errors, uh, what some of, some of the questions I just thought were a little bit confusing. If a majority of you did not get it right, I decided to just throw it out. So if you have noticed that your quiz grades have changed, it's because um, any errors I have found, I have changed your grades accordingly, and I have curved your grades um, I've taken out some questions and I've just given you credit for those questions. So if you don't know how your grade went from uh, 20 points lower to 20 points higher, that is why. Your grade should no way go lower. If your grade has somehow gone lower, um, then that is a Blackboard error. Let me know. I will fix that right away. Here's the purpose of what we're doing today. Let me tell you what your midterm exam is going to be like. It is 50 questions. It is 50 questions that come from the previous quizzes. You will not see a question on your midterm that you have not previously seen on these quizzes. And I am going to do these quizzes with you right now, explain what the right answer is, why it is the right answer, and so you can take notes and have those notes in front of you. When you take your actual midterm exam, and you have all next week to do it at your leisure, when you take the exam, you have uh, two hours. It's timed. No more than two hours. You have got to take it in one sitting. You cannot leave the screen and come back. Uh, so you're going to want to have your textbook and your notes in front of you. Um, so you're going to want to take notes on this video uh, so you have those notes. However, you're going to want to study those notes as if this was a face-to-face -face exam, and here's why. Uh, since it is timed, you're not necessarily going to have the option to go back and look up the correct answer for each one. Um, so I'm going to give you plenty of time, but it's still going to be, um, it's still going to be rushed enough that you don't have time to look up each and every answer. Also, if two of you decide to take this exam next to each other, no two exams are alike. That means that you will get a different random set of questions than your classmate will. All of these exams are different. They will all include questions. Uh, from chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. I went ahead and made the quiz for 8 a bonus. I have given you the answers to that quiz on your lecture this week. Um, it is optional. If you do it, then it, it wipes out one of your other grades. You already have three grades dropped. If you do it, it wipes out one of your other grades. Um, and if you don't, it doesn't hurt you. But you do need to go and look at that so you can see what the correct answers are. That way you have it for your midterm because it will be on your midterm. So I'm going to go through and do all of these quizzes with you. And then I'm going to push OK. And then it will give me the grade so you will see that what I clicked is actually correct. So there won't be any sort of ambiguity on why your answers are right or wrong when it comes to your midterm. So let's go ahead and get started. I might have to pause this regularly because I've been having some serious problems with Blackboard and some internet slowness issues. So um, if I pause it, uh, just give me a second. It will resume immediately on your end, but I don't want you to have to wait for things to process. So there will be lots of pauses and resuming unless my internet's picked up and Blackboard is no longer as slow. So let's go ahead and get started. <coughs> Let's see how fast this goes. Big lecture quiz is perfect. That one was on me. It has sped up significantly. When I did this video for another class yesterday, it took forever. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to do that quiz. <laughs> Time limit of 15 minutes, we will not need that long. Chapter one, which of the following is a good formal definition of politics? A controlled study, I already know, independent, nope, that's science. Process through which individuals and groups reach an agreement on a course of action, they disagree on the goals of that action. Um, any system govern, new, new. the answer of course is B. Many of you, most of you got that correct. Question two, the tragedy of the commons can be solved through 
transaction costs? No. Conformity costs and free riding. Free riding is a problem of the tragedy of the commons. The answer is C, regulation and privatization. Question three, a good is a public good if it is rivalrous and excludable? No, it needs to be non-rivalrous and non-excludable. So the answer is C. Which of the following is an example of collective action? King imposing taxes? Nope, that's unilateral action. A person choosing? Nope, that's one person. A member? That's one person. Organized crime families jockeying over turf? That is collective action because it involves many people. Question five. Which of the following is a formal definition of government? Those institutions created by a constitution and legally prescribed process for making and enforcing collective agreements. That is your answer. It has nothing to do with how you have your government. It has to do with it is a body that is governed by a document and has a legally prescribed process for collective agreements. Question six. A prisoner's dilemma arises in which of the following is instances? When a convict pleads guilty to a crime? No, it has to have more than one person involved. When ever individuals who ultimately benefit from cooperating also have a powerful and irresistible incentive to break and exploit the other type? That is your correct answer. If anyone needs to know why these answers are correct, please let me know. I'm happy to tell you. Why is a prisoner's dilemma a critical part of American politics? Uncertainty and incomplete affirmation prevent collective action in one majority degrees. No. Each side recognizes they'll be better off acting alone because no one will be trusted to cooperate. Not necessarily. It ensures that politicians go to jail if they lie. I oh we wish. Special exchanges occur when each side recognizes they will be better off with the collective outcome rather than acting alone. That is the answer. What are transaction costs? Costs associated with buying and selling, costs associated with enactment, time, effort, and resources needed to make collective decisions. That is the correct answer for the sake of politics. Transaction costs is everything that it takes to make a law, to make a collective decision. Question nine, good consequences for others in society who do not consume the good directly, like education or immunization, are called what? Positive externalities. A negative externality is things like secondhand smoke or pollution. It's when bad consequences for others who do not consume the good directly, but still have negative outcomes from it. And finally, question 10, Form of government that is a representative democracy ruled by law, known as republic, the public thing. So save and submit, okay. This should be relatively quick. Okay, to view the results. So you will see that I got 100, so you know that those answers are correct when you see them on your midterm. Now let's go to chapter two. Ha ha ha, that's funny. I'm gonna pause that and fix it so I can do this with you guys. Okay, it's easier for me to just show you the correct answers and why they're correct rather than do the quiz. Same goal, so let me go ahead and do that with you. What was the name dun, 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 of the practice where Britain ceded control of the colonists to manage their own affairs? Sorry, y'all, my bad. Including taxation. It was known as home rule. The answer is A. What was the Stamp Act? Stamp Act was controversial because the tax printed on materials was not self-imposed by the legislatures. So it was a tax imposed by British on previously self-governed colonists. The American Revolution was nearly undermined by what collective action problem was states failed to contribute their promised money and supplies for soldiers enlisted. 
That is known as free riding. When people um, be, realize that they get the benefits of certain collective actions without actually having to put in any resources, that is known as free riding. Multiple choice three, question three. The Britain responded to the Boston Tea Party Restraining Acts with the Restraining Acts and Coercive Acts. These were also kind of known as the Intolerable Acts. So they closed the Boston Harbor, they dissolved the Massachusetts Assembly, they forced Americans to quarter or house British soldiers, and ordered Americans charged with protest to be sent to England for trial. The answer for that one is D. What is another name for the course of acts? Ah, I just answered that one for you. The Intolerable Acts, they were intolerable. Which of the following was the primary point of Thomas Paine's pamphlet, Common Sense? The point was only in the creation of an independent public would the people find contentment. So there was this picture of this snake, you remember it from your textbook, um, and the snake was all the colonies that had been put together and once they were disjointed, they were not happy and whole. So it was basically a propaganda piece, a very well done propaganda piece uh, for uh, independence, the independence movement. Out of the Articles of Confederation states, faced with the classic prisoner's dilemma, which of the following reasons? Uh, nope. It's because with no enforcement mechanism, no state would contribute its share of revenue, as long as it suspected other states might do it. So as long as they, since they knew, the Articles of Confederation, Confederation is everybody is equal, there is no big boss forcing anyone to do anything. So essentially, because there were free riders, there was no, really, no reason for the um, new states to give when they thought that other states may be free riding. On September 17, 1781, America, in collaboration with Lang, finally paid off a de decisive victory over Great Britain. It was the French, D. The most successful objection to the Anti-Federalists raised against the proposed Constitution was, it didn't have a Bill of Rights. It was a state's rights issue. They were afraid of um, more tyranny. They were afraid of tyranny by the majority, actually. Not just tyranny by the government, but tyranny by the majority. Uh, people coming in and saying, if most people hold one opinion, those with an unpopular opinion would lose their civil rights and civil liberties. The Senate's power to confirm appointments and ratify treaties are examples of which of the following? A legislative check on presidential duties. So those are the answers to that one. Let's go ahead and move on to chapter three. Okay, I have the option to take this one, so I'm going to go ahead and take it for you. In a federal system, the Constitution divides authority between which of the following? Parliament, executive, no, we're looking at two or more distinct levels of government. That's a federal system, state and local, or actually technically federal and state. Federal and state, but also it's called intergovernmental relations when you factor in state, local, and federal government. But we're looking at two or more distinct levels of government. American federalism is two, the state and the federal government because the local government is not mentioned in the Constitution. A confederation is a form of government described as which of the following? Lower level possess primary authority. Um, very good, that's it. Essentially, it's all chiefs, um, no Indians. Everybody is equal and there is no big overseeing federal government. They're just together in name only. Question three, in the unitary government system, what, what, which of the following is true? The national government monopolizes constitutional authority. 75% of governments are unitary. Local governments in the United States do not exercise independent constitutional, that's the correct answer. They are not mentioned in the constitution. Uh, local governments um, have whatever powers the state government decides to give to them. Dual federalism leaves the states and national governments to preside over which of the following? Mm -hmm. Non-exclusive spheres of sovereignty, mutually exclusive spheres of sovereignty, identical spheres, one, mutually exclusive spheres of sovereignty. It says who can do what and when. Um, and there are some powers that are shared, but mutually exclusive spheres of sovereignty. Question six, the original intent of the Supremacy Clause was to ensure which of the following? The national government prevail when they were acting in a constitutionally incorrect manner. State governments would prevail, Supreme Court, answer is A. 
Question seven. The use of, by the national government of cross cutting requirements, crossover stations, direct orders, and partial preemptions are what in the, of the following? Unfunded mandates. Question eight. Who is the ultimate arbiter of controversies involving American federalism? That is the U.S. Supreme Court. And finally, American federalism is defined as what? A two-tiered system comprising the national government and the state governments. So let's save and submit. Excellent, 90 out of 90. So I will go ahead and curve that since I got rid of one question that I didn't like, which is what that pause was all about. I'll go ahead and curve that for you. Okay, so let's move on to chapter four. Okay. This one has been, I've gotten rid of two questions that I didn't like. It has been curved up to 100 for you guys. So, enlisting race or ethnicity as the primary criterion for identifying a suspect is racial profiling. Everyone knows that. Reaction to September 11th. The answer is, it was much similar to the Japanese uh, internment camps after Pearl Harbor, the way that people of Middle Eastern descent were treated. The term civil rights describes protections of individuals against arbitrary and abusive government action. Uh, remember, protections from versus protections by. And that's actually the answer down here. Although the two concepts are used interchangeably, what's the difference between civil liberties and civil rights? Civil liberties are the constitutional protections from government power. So this thing the government cannot do, the government cannot um, infringe upon your freedom of speech. The government cannot um, force you to quarter soldiers like the British did. Civil rights are protections by the government. Which, of the which political party was committed to the abolition of slavery and attracted a former president to serve as its candidate. That was the Free Soil Party. After Lincoln was elected for the first time, which of the following was true, the president and majority of both houses were aligned against slavery's extension. Which amendment provided the right to vote? The 13th abolished slavery. The 14th was due process and equal protection. The answer is the 15th. Supreme Court, Brown versus the Board of Education, was notable for which of the following reasons? It struck down separate but equal in Plessy versus Ferguson. Alrighty, so that is chapter four. Let's move on to chapter five and six. Much into one. Alrighty, chapters five and six. One major difference between the House of Representatives and the and the Senate is what? The Senate allocates seats by population. I mean the House allocates seats by population. The Senate is comprised of two members from each state. So every time there is a census, we have to make sure that districts are equal um, and allocated by population, but there's two senators. That's how it works. <clears throat> Article one, section eight contains powers of Congress. The necessary and proper clause, also known as the elastic clause, provides lawmakers with the most expansive, elastic, stretchy grant of power in the Constitution. The necessary and proper clause says that they can do anything that's necessary and proper to carry out their powers, and this has been uh, greatly exploited and stretched to expand government power. The term gerrymander refers to which of the following? Um, I thought that was clever. It is when you manipulate the shape of legislative districts to benefit a certain incumbent or political party, typically political parties. These districts have to be contiguous so you can't, you know, just draw circles around different places. They have to all be connected, but they can be in crazy amorphous shapes. Since the 1964 Supreme Court, Westbury, uh, support, Supreme Court case, Westbury versus Sanders, congressional districts must have which of the following? The answer is equal populations. Regarding the difference in the incumbency advantage between the House and the Senate, it's safe to say that Senate election outcomes are more variable than House election outcomes. There's more turnover in the Senate. House party leaders are which of the following? Bosses, not agents. Agents, not bosses. Yes, yeah, so house party leaders 
um, are not in control of um, the members of their party, um, but they act on behalf of the members of their party. To end a filibuster in the Senate, closure must be enacted in votes by how many votes? Three-fifths. That's currently 60 votes. Three-fifths of the Senate. What type of committee exists from one Congress to the next unless explicitly disbanded? Standing committees. Standing committees are those committees that deal with like rules committee, that deals with those things that have to happen in every session. I'm not talking about interim committees that, you know, meet um, or special committees. We're talking about standing committees. They're there all the time. Discharge petition does what? Discharge petition says, you don't even have to get committee approval. You don't have to get voted onto the floor. You can just go directly to the floor. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and move on to chapter seven. Okay, I can actually take this one, so let's do it. Article two of the US Constitution gives the president the power to declare war, handle foreign policy, veto, all of the above. What is senatorial courtesy? Process uh, confirming the president's, nope. It's the process that denies confirmation of a judicial appointment if not approved by their own state senator. So it does help the president. It, it kind of streamlines that process. The executive office of the president is one of the president's plural, uh, possessive powers, administrative powers. What power of the president does not require congressional approval but carry the weight of law? Those are executive orders, y'all. Which president established the concept of inherent powers through the Louisiana Purchase? That was Jefferson. Which president used the Interstate Commerce Clause and Elastic Clause to justify government programs? Okay, the key here is government programs. Uh, some say Lincoln exploited the Interstate Commerce Clause and the Elastic Clause. Andrew Jackson did a lot of crazy things. Um, the answer is Franklin D. Roosevelt when we were talking about the New Deal and uh, his response to the Great Depression. Which body has the power to bring articles of impeachment against the president? That's the House. The Senate is, once they bring it, it's kind of like an indictment. The Senate is the one that tries them. What is the power of the State of the Union address? It sets an agenda for the president. It does not tell the legislature what they must do. The president does not control the legislature. It doesn't public censure. The president does not control. So obviously not all of the above. Which of the following was an attempt by the Congress, by Congress to limit the president's use of the military? The War Powers Act, War Powers Resolution, several of you emailed me. Um, I don't know which one was accidentally toggled, but it has been fixed. That is the correct answer. It is a good question, so I left it in here, but I did update your grade. The president may do the following. Criminalize abortion. Nope. Forgive your student loan debt. We wish. Unilaterally declare war. No, they need Congress for that, but they can direct troops to anywhere they wish immediately. And they, uh, because of the War Powers Act, Res War Powers Resolution, uh, they, you know, cannot declare, they can only do it for so long. But as of right now, direct troops anywhere he wishes. All righty. Only took me two minutes to do that, so that bodes well for you guys. 100 out of 100. Excellent. So let's go look at bonuses real quick. Okay, here is your bonus. Uh, there are only four questions, but those four questions will show up on your midterm. I'm not going to go through these with you because I already did. They are included in this week's um, lecture, so I don't want to spoon feed those to you. Uh, they're a bonus for you going and actually going into the lecture. So that's where these answers are if you want them. Okay, I'm going to post this for you guys. Also, don't forget... Um, I need your coalition email addresses and your, your final coalition uh, selections. Um, I have 47 out of 53, you guys. So six of you do not have a coalition. Uh, some of you are not in um, a coalition that has a lot of people, um, which it's a, better to have at least some people helping you than to do this alone. So I'm going to let those coalitions make after they've hit three. But um, it would be best if... Uh, you have not joined a coalition to go and join one. So go ahead and get one. Otherwise, you're totally on your own. All right. I will see you guys next week.